We stand on the word, God. We stand believing that all things are possible, Lord. We ask you for your anointing of your favor, God. Speak, Lord, that the things in your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, God. Give us, Lord, give us our, our, your daily bread, ah, that, Lord, we may receive the word upon good ground in our hearts, Lord. We go to the mountaintops, hey, where revelation reveals the very mind of God. We speak to the valley lows, every dry place and dead place come alive. Hallelujah, Jesus. We speak to our plateaus, God, with expectation, Lord, of the next battle, the next victory the next one God we believe you for your promises Lord that you are able to do far exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the faith and the hope that worketh in us God it's in us Lord it's in us to be victorious it's in us to be victorious let your power God move upon us Lord in the name of Jesus we rebuke every yoke God every stronghold in the name of Jesus give us the faith of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego God, stand in the fire with us, Lord. Stand in the lion's den, Lord. As Daniel was in the den, God, be with us, Lord. Be with us in this hour like never before, Jesus. We need your glory. We need your power. We need a manifestation of your power. In Jesus' name. Come on, if you have the Holy Ghost, move in your spirit. Begin to prophesy and declare the mind of God in here. The mind, the revealed power of God. In the name of Jesus, we need the dunamis here. We need an, out, an explosion of God's power. We need the explosion of God's power. Oh, Every enemy, everything is under our feet. Everything, every sickness and disease, every doubt, every fear is under our feet. Right now, in the name of Jesus, wake us up, Lord. We stir our spirit, Lord. Hear this morning, believe in God for your promises, Lord. Come on, we got a few more minutes. We got a few more minutes. Just another minute or so. Come on, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. What can you do with 30 seconds? What can you do? God, we need the rain of God's presence. We need a rain of His presence to fall on us. A fresh fire, a fresh anointing, a fresh move. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, anybody here have expectation this morning? Let's give God a round of applause. Clap your hands to the King of Glory. No, come on, give God that praise. Come on, give him praise. Praise the Lord, everybody. We'd like to welcome you to our 1130 service to Redeemer Apostolic Church. Those that are you are here. I believe we have baptisms here this morning. Amen. God's getting doing some great things. How many are ready to receive what God has in store for us? Lift up your hands right there where you are. Father, we thank you. Glorify your mighty name. We thank you are God. Woo! And there's no one besides you, Lord. We honor you, Lord, in this place. Let your fire come upon us, Lord, consuming everything that doth not belong in your presence, God. Consuming every enemy, God. In the name of Jesus, breaking strongholds, hey! Loosening shackles, God. Let the gates that have held us back be swung wide open. Oh, open up the windows of heaven, Lord, and pour out a blessing for which we shall not be able to contain. Clap your hands to the Lord. Look at somebody next to you tell I'm glad to see you in the house of the Lord. Greet somebody. If you don't know him, greet him in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We're ready for a downpour. Let it fall fresh. Let it fall fresh on us. We're ready for revival. Let it fall fresh. Yes, God. Let it fall fresh on us.
many are ready to receive what God has for you? Amen. I said, how many ready to receive? We're ready for a downpour. Let it fall fresh. Let it fall fresh on us. We're ready.
God that is showing up in a mighty way like we've never seen it before. We need God to pour. Come on, anybody here need God to pour it out? Pour out His Spirit upon us. Hallelujah, yes, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. God is moving right now. Come on, lift your worship to God. Lift your worship to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. I speak victory over you. Come on, I speak victory over you. I speak victory over your life. Come on, if you need victory, say it with me. I speak victory. I need it right now. I speak victory. Whatever you're battling with, God says, I'm going to call it good. Woo! The victory belongs to Jesus. Speak victory over every life, over every family. I speak victory over every situation, over every nation. Every enemy is conquered. Every stronghold is brought down. I speak victory. I speak victory. We're bringing home every son and daughter. Rulers of darkness have to bow. I speak victory. I speak victory. Victory in the name of Jesus.
of Jesus. Let's drink you in. I just feel this in the Holy Ghost, brothers. I know I'm breaking protocol, but I feel it in the Holy Ghost. There's something that has to happen right now. There's victory that's got to happen right now. Some of you are so desperate. I'm desperate. I'm desperate. I need a victory. I need God to show up right now. I don't have another moment. I need him right now. Is there victory in the house? Is there victory in the house? Is there victory in the house? Oh, yes, he is. sister this is a name of salvation this is the name of redemption this is the name of restoration this is the name of healing and power so you just can't call on any name you can't call Muhammad you can't call facetious you can't call on nobody but the name of Jesus yes say it with me Sing Jesus Hallelujah. Jesus there's victory in the name. Close your eyes and raise your hand. Say, Jesus. Raise your hand. Jesus. There's victory in the name. One more time, say, Sing, Jesus. Jesus. There's victory in your name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
let's give God a round of applause. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give God a shout of praise. Amen. Without any further delay, let's receive First Lady, First Lady Andrea Navarrete. God bless you. Praise the Lord, church. You may be seated. There is no other name greater under heaven and earth than the name of Jesus. He is so good tonight. I would like to give honor to where honors due. I want to give honor to Bishop Hudson and Sister Hudson. We love you so much. Well, good to see you. Good to see you. We love you. Uh, give honor to uh, Pastor Jerome, our dear friend. God bless you. We're, ha we're so uh, blessed to have you here in the house. Honor to my husband, Bishop uh, Santos Navarrete. He's a man of God that loves, is after God's own heart. He loves the work of the Lord. He loves you all. And we are so blessed to have him as our bishop. Amen. Um, I'm going to go quickly through the, uh, the announcements today at 2 p.m. For all who are new to Redeemer Apostolic Church and would like to become a member, um, we'd like to invite you this afternoon at 2 p.m. Uh, for a luncheon in the fellowship hall. Uh, it's kind of like a meet and greet. You get to hear from myself. You get to hear from my husband. The vision, the ch what the church is about, a little bit of history of who we are, so that when you join this church, you will feel right at home. Amen. We have Spanish Ladies Bible Study Saturday, August 20th with Sister Mary Ferret. Um, it's going to be at the Redeemer Fellowship Hall. That's again Saturday, August 20th. I don't have a time, so I'm sure she'll be contacting you all. Um, we have, we're in the last couple of weeks of our children's ministry envelope, envelope fundraiser. 100% of those uh, donations go to the children's from if you want to step back into the foyer and grab an envelope back there. Whatever amounts on that envelope you give to, um, and it goes directly to the children's ministry. Amen. Um, if I can take a little bit of time, you know, I was thinking about yesterday how, you know, there's so many times are changing from day to day. We never know what's going to happen next. And, you know, God continues to provide a lifeline in his word and his promises so that we don't have to react to fear in the way the world reacts. Amen. Um, you know, we are getting hit more every, every day. But God said in Deuteronomy 31, be strong, be courageous and firm. Fear not. Do not be in terror before them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not fail you. He will not forsake you. Be strong, courageous, and firm. See, Deuteronomy means to repeat. And sometimes I think like we as God's people, we need to have a repeat. We have to hear from him over and over again. And there's nothing like being in the house of the Lord to hear his word that brings us courage and brings us comfort. When we stay away, then we don't have that. And anxieties try, try to overtake us. Worriness, the fear of the unknown tries to overtake us. But God says, fear not, be courageous. For you shall go with his people to the land which the Lord has sworn by your fathers. He, here is what I like most about this scripture. And I expanded the text a little bit. I like to look at the uh, Hebrew words and, and, and I like to look at expanding it because it says so much more to my soul. He says, he will not let you go or forsake you. Let there be no cowardness or flinching, but fear not. Neither become broken in spirit, depressed or dismayed unnerved with the alarm. Confronting the spirit of the unknown says, no, I'm bringing that to God. I'm going to bring it to God. See, you know, they did a little survey the other day and I was watching this show and they, and they said, what was the greatest fear people are facing today? And I, I, the first thing that came to my mind is I'm thinking people probably would have said death, but they're saying the greatest fear people are facing today is a fear of the unknown. But God says, no, I have a plan for you. He has it under control. So you know what? I'm going to use his word to encourage myself. Amen. Sometimes when we just don't feel like things are going our way, when we're facing fear of the unknown of our health, fear of the unknown of our job situation, fear of the unknown of our finances, of our marriage, whatever it might be, God says, I have it under control. See, whatever those uncertainties are in your life today, God says, I've already made it known to you. I've made it known that I am that I am. I am to you. I will provide for you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He's already made it known to us. So we don't have to fear the unknown because God has it under control. Amen. So as we transition, I'm going to ask you to stand into our tithe and our offering. And, you know, we can trust God in our finances. 
we've been asking a lot this last few months, but God has been so good to you, to us. Has he left any of you or forsaken any of you for giving, for giving to the Lord? I can tell you right now, he has just been so good to us. He's given us more above and beyond what we could ever ask for. We are hitting the months, the summer months where the expenses go up, but the, sometimes the giving goes down. They say the giving goes down and, and it's so true in the, in the summer months, also in December. Why? Because the summer months, people are taking vacations. They're spending their money elsewhere. De December, sometimes it goes down because people spend it on Christmas. Now I know that's not you and I because we're faithful to the things of God, amen. But I'd like to ask you, whatever God moves upon your heart, whatever he moves upon your sp spirit, if you can give an extra $20, $50, $100 today. We could use your help. We just got our utility bill the other day and we about fell over when we saw. It was over $5,000. Every time we walk into this building, it cost us something, amen? So if you can be a little generous today, we would appreciate that. You can, there's so many ways to give. You can give through Secure, Secure Give, our vision app, our kiosk at the bookstore in person by mail, or you can text to give by typing the dollar amount at 84321. God has been so good to us. So we're gonna ask you to we're gonna ask you to bow your heads as we pray for these tithing offering. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory, we thank you, God, because you are a provider. You have never left us, you have never forsaken us, God. We trust in your word, we stand upon your promises. We ask that you bless these tithe and offering according to your word, and you open the windows of heaven and you multiply in the mighty, wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. We got to open up the heavens. Open, come on. Open up the windows. Open up the floodgates. delay. Let's receive Pastor Jerome Davidson with a round of applause. Amen unto God in Jesus' name. God bless you. Well, Father, we just praise your name. We'll give you all of the glory and praise and honor. What a major, mighty privilege to stand before the God of heaven and to beseech you with our petitions. Prayer. We give you all of the praise, Lord God, for what you're about to do in this place. You are about to break the shackles. The shackles that exist in the mind and the body and the spirit. I command everybody under the sound of my voice to be free from every ailment of sickness, disease, and affliction right now. I command you to be healed from every disease, from the blood cells, to the organs, to the brain, to the bones. Be healed right now. Be restored now. We give you the praise right now. 
in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody. Give God some praise. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. Somebody give God the glory. Give God the glory. Give God the praise. Oh. Well, listen. I'm just one of those kind of party people. <laughs> Some people you don't invite to the party because they like to sit down too much and they, they just had a sour look on their faces. I just want to party with some folks that just want to celebrate with me. Let me tell you why. Because the Lord redeemed my life. Some folks tried to poison your boy. But the Lord was too good to allow it. They tried to take me out of here. But God kept me in the game. Do I have some folk that want to give God the glory? Woo! Well, 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 well. You may be seated, man, I'm telling you. Got some young folk getting ready to go back to school. And, uh, man, I don't know, I don't know. I just feel like having some church, man. I just... Can you wear some church stuff in there? Anybody know about that hand clapping, the old school type praising God? Oh, man. I'm telling you the type of praises when you, after you have ran around the building, after you have jumped up and down, after you've shouted, cried, yelled, screamed, is just more praise down on the inside. It's just something down on the inside. Anybody still got that type of thing? Anybody still got that type of appreciation and love and joy in the Lord? Well, come on. Put your, come on, somebody.
when folk got the Holy Ghost, they don't mind saying Holy Ghost. But when you just have just a, a, a little touch from God, you want to say Holy Spirit. But when you got the Holy Ghost, the power of God, you just want to say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. In my soul. In my hands. In my feet. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. In my heart. In my mind. In my mouth. All over me. All right, all right, all right, all right. I just don't want to leave church without having church. Come on, shake your neighbor's hand and say, I just want to have some church real quick. I just want to give God for who he is. He brought me out of some terrible things. I was messed up. I was torn up. My life was jacked up. But God had mercy on me. And I don't care who's looking at me. I'm about to give God a crazy praise. I was jacked up. I was depressed. I was messed up. But one day his grace this room everybody in here has been spared the grave look around this room look at the grace of God on everybody we could have been dead sleeping in our graves but God said saw fit to leave us here and since we're here we should give him a praise <laughs> come on somebody enough joy in the house of the Lord to make Beyonce and all them folks out there feel ashamed. Listen, listen the nightclubs should want to shut down after seeing what we do. After they see how we get down, they, they might as well shut it down because we are lively stones. We are the redeemed of the Lord. We've been purchased with the blood of Jesus and we're going to give God a great shout of hallelujah. We're going to give God the glory. Oh, yeah. Tell your neighbor, say, this is the church. This is the church. This ain't no club. This ain't no get together. This ain't no regular organization. This thing right here has been purchased with the blood of God. God gave his blood for this thing right here. And my next praise is going to be all about the blood. Somebody say, yeah. When I give him praise this time, it's because God shed his blood for me. Oh, yeah. One, two, one, two, three. but the devil ain't nobody mad but the devil ain't nobody mad at you praising God but the devil 
And so I see a lot of shy folks around here. You understand? There are people, they, 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 they don't want to come out of their shell right now. But if you won a $10 million sweepstakes, you'd be doing some crazy stuff. You'd be jumping up and down, maybe pulling your hair, running around in the room. You'd be doing all kinds of stuff. You'd be calling everybody, yelling, screaming. Can we just give God some crazy praise right now? Because we won God. We got the God, the maker, the creator, the God of all heaven, the God of glory. Somebody shout glory. Come on. You may be seated. I just, I just thank God. I'm thankful to the Lord. I'm thankful to the Lord. Uh, I just want a little more in the monitors. I feel like preaching this thing. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together worthy. You're all together holy. All together wonderful to me. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. And here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. You're all together worthy. All together wonderful to me. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross I'll never know y'all young people y'all will get this one day how much it costs to see my sin upon ay 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 onda era ba ete eh uh ay 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 So just like 
all of the people that Jesus set free, they said, uh, so here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say, you're mine. You're all together lovely. You're all together worthy. You're all together wonderful to me. So here I am to worship. One more time, everybody just lift your voices. Here I am to bow down. Say that you're my God. You're all together worthy. All together worthy. All together all together wonderful wonderful to me i'll never know Everybody just lift your hands in the presence of the Lord. The King is here. The King is here. The King of kings. The Lord of lords. The God of glory. The majestic one. The holy. The ancient one of days. The one who is everlasting. From everlasting to everlasting. May he rest upon you. May he touch you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. May he indwell you. May he take up his abode in your hearts and in your minds. Dada, esho ondra, efe, eso ondebe. Doheshe endi oho oho. Raha isha ndebe. Oso. Daheshe endohokai. And the whole, I say, and they are all over this room. Everybody, receive the Holy Spirit, receive the Holy Ghost, receive the one who abides, receive the one who dwells, receive the one who gives power. Yes, let him do it. Shackles are being destroyed. I told you, I heard it. Shackles are being destroyed.
I say yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. My soul says yes. My mind says yes. My heart says yes. So everything that you're doing in this hour and in this moment, my soul says yes. I like to do when I'm in the presence of the Lord I just like to just let God search me and uh, the searching process is not a lot of words it's just it's allowing God to see who you are without any mask without any airs or pretensions like Adam and Eve in the garden before they hid the leaves, before they sinned before God. They were naked. They were open before God. And I'd like to just, when the Spirit of God is present, I'd just like to let him search me. Anybody want God to search you? Yes, yes. He, he, and I'm going to tell you something. He's going to discover some wicked stuff. He's going to see some darkness. But that's good. How many of you will go to a, a, a cancer surgeon and ask him not to, not to see the cancer? not to remove the, the badness. You want them to see it. You want the surgeon to see where the problem is. You want them to see what's there so that they can get rid of it. And every day you just go before God and let God just shine your light inside of me. And if you find anything that's wicked, dark, evil, and at times we could feel it, you know, we could sense it. And just let God take it away. Let him judge it. Let him judge it. Let him condemn it and say, this has to go. And then he taketh away. Can I have an amen? amen? All right. Well, all right. Well, we honor the Lord. And we thank God for our bishop, Bishop Neverente. And we thank God for him and giving us the opportunity to minister here. It's my friend. It's my buddy. And then when I was sick, he was checking on me. And uh, he didn't check on me too much. I, you know, I check, people check on you too much. You just stop responding. But <laughs> he didn't have to, I didn't have to do that with him. So, but, but I thank God for you, buddy. Appreciate you. Thank God for Pastor Joshua and his lovely wife and our first lady. Just so many wonderful saints of the Lord. And to the first family, all the daughters, everybody working, and the grandsons. There's one right there, right? Your grandson? No, no, he's not. My, oh, here's one right here. Here's one of the grandsons, yeah. It's good to see young people in the house of the Lord. Good to see you. I got saved when I was 17, and uh, I've been walking with God ever since. I went to ASU, and uh, it's, it, at the time it was known as the, the, lead, the nation leading party school. And uh, I, gave my, I was saved, so I didn't go to no parties. I attended no parties, not one. I was never even... It didn't mean nothing to me at all. Let me say this to you young folks. Don't let the devil take something and create something to beat you your whole life with. They will give you something that seems fun at first. Seems like it's cool, but you end up being addicted to it for the rest of your life. You'll struggle. And when people hate you, they will give you stuff that'll make you addicted. They'll introduce somebody into your life as, as a good person fit for you. That person will end up beating you, cheating you, dogging you the rest of your life. And I want to say this to you. You think you're in love with somebody. Whenever, let me give you a telltale sign of when you're with someone who's abusive or somebody you should not be with, okay? Whenever they start creating distance between you and your family and between you and the people that are good for you, it's a problem. That's a telltale sign. I'm telling you right now. You need to you'd recognize that sign. Remember this big black preacher told you that when these people start saying that you, they hate the fact that you're going around your family because th that's one of the main things that people that want to control your life do. 
they want to get you away from the good people that help keep you connected to your good roots and to the things that are good for you and they get upset because you keep going back to them because they've been trying to scrape and clean you away from that so that now they can take you and control you and make you all theirs. And once you get to be all theirs, look for some black eyes, some babies that they won't take care of, all kinds of stuff like that. I'm just, I don't know, I don't know why I'm talking like this, Bishop. But I just wanted to share that with you because the devil's job is not to love you. His job is to abuse you. But they come in the name of love. Stop in the name of love. Yeah, yeah. But you thinking they're going to stop in the name of love. No, no, because, see, the devil's assignment is to kill, steal, and destroy. And see, that, that's, uh, that's one of the rhythmic things when it comes to fighting. Rhythmic fighters like Mike Tyson, these guys had a, they had a, a count in their mind. It was a subliminal count in their mind when they was going to start throwing the punches. And they would punch in bunches of three. So they count to three, and then they throw punches of three. One, two, three, one, two, three. And the devil's a one, two, three fighter. <laughs> you see, he's a one, two, three fighter. He'll step back, catch his breath for three seconds, and come back and throw three punches to kill, steal, and destroy. Well, but God says when he come at you like that, the Spirit of God will lift up a standard against him. Well, I'm going to preach a word, and I just want to just share something with you uh, that the Lord is blessing me to study and share and, uh, and just look at. I, I, I like to study uh, angelology, theology, demonology, uh, eschatology, the last days. I like to study the study of God, the study of, of his creation, and the study of these beings that we deal with called demons and the angels who were once in heaven, but they rebelled against God. And God does not have pity or sympathy for them at all, okay? Don't, don't even think that, that God has pity or sympathy for these beings. He does not. He doesn't care about them at all. And I, I want y'all to develop that type of mindset too. You know, don't play around with demons. You know, the tattoos and the music and all this kind of stuff, they just play around with all the skulls and all this kind of stuff. Don't mess around with this stuff. You don't even need that. And whether it's bad or good, it just don't look good. Can I have an amen in here? It just don't look right. You are a child of God, a Christian, you singing all the holy songs, and you got a skull and bones on your arm. Well, what is that about? God is about life, right? Say something on there about life if you're going to tattoo. Tat it up, tat it up right. Can I get an amen in here? I, I, listen, I, I can't stop anybody from doing anything. I, I, I know. I, as pastors, we can't stop y'all from doing what you feel like you're going to do. But if you're going to do something, do it right. <laughs> I, have no, I, have, I don't even have any tattoos. I don't have not one. And uh, not that that's going to get me a pathway into heaven. I just don't want it. I like my skin. The color of it is nice. The texture is nice. <laughs> See, you only get one set of skin. You understand? I don't want to do that. And then folks get all kinds of stuff all around their face. Do you realize that's not going to go anywhere? You're not going to get a new set. You can't file bankruptcy and say, Lord, I want some new skin. <laughs> it's not going to happen. All right, I want to talk about it's your time. And let's look now at Mark, Matthew chapter 8. And starting at verse 28 and 29, and we want to glean uh, something from these two verses that is going to help us out and give us something about God's timing concerning the lives of the believers and concerning the lives of the rebellious angels uh, who rebelled against God and had uh, some creatures that we call demons. And so here it is, verse 28 of Matthew chapter 8. And it says, and when he was come, Jesus, to the other side of the country of the Gesserines, that he there met him two that were possessed with devils. Now this word devils, demoniac, 
This word demoniac comes from the word intelligentsia, which is intelligence. And when you call people a demon, you're calling them intelligent. Because these are the intelligent ones all around the world. We have great pyramids that was designed with mathematical structure that no human being could have ever designed. And these things were built back four and 5,000 years ago. Back in antiquity, these beings, uh, these beings took without saws, without heavy cranes and lifts, and took these stones and cut them at the perfect angles and structures and created the Great Pyramid. Now, the Great Pyramids is not only found in Egypt, but they are found around the world. All of them are perfectly aligned with Orion's belt and some of the stars because the people who created them, the beings that created them, are the fallen ones from heaven. Forget all this stuff about UFOs and these beings that are green and yellow and blue and all this stuff. Nah, 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 listen, listen, I believe in UFOs. I believe they was in heaven at one time and they rebelled against God and this is what we have falling out of space. When you see these spaceships and all this stuff with lights and stuff like that, that ain't nothing but fallen angels. But science don't want you to see it as that. They want you to say, believe that it was some kind of other beings and creatures. And then the great deception around the world will one day be that these Anunnaki or, or, or UFOs were the ones who created mankind. The devil is a liar. God, the one who made the heavens and the stars and the galaxies and the angels is the same God who made you and I. And to him be praised for what he has done. To him be praised for our existence. Not some Anunnaki, big-headed, big-eyed, ugly creature that looked like a light bulb with a face. We don't believe in this stuff. But we do know that there was, at one time, beings who were once around the throne of God, who was created by God, to worship him, to do the glory and the bidding of the Lord, but they became jealous of mankind. They asked God a question while they were there. They said, what is man that thou art so mindful of him? God says, yes, I made man from the speck of dust. But the Bible lets us know that God made his angels from fire. They are called the fiery ones. We're made from the dust. They're made from fire. Fire is greater than dust, so he made us a little lower than the angels. But yet being made lower than the angels, God's mind, God's love, God's purpose is more on us than it is on the angels. And Satan told the angels that God was more interested in man and making them the servants of man than he was of them, causing many of the angels, a third of the angels, to rebel against God. And when they rebelled against God, I want you to study Genesis chapter 6. When it says that when the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, that they took them wives, they forced them to be wives, and they had an offspring of angels or children called the Nephilim, or there was giants in the earth. These angels who fail in Genesis chapter 6 because their assignment was to come down and teach mankind civilization. It was 200 of them who rebelled against God, but they started to do the, the abominable. Everybody say the abominable. When we say the word abomination, we really don't understand what it really means in the eyes of God. That when someone creates an abomination, they're doing something that is not designed for the body. So when these angels came down, they created an abomination with mankind and with animals. The Bible says it is an abomination for a man to lie with a beast. It is an abomination for a man to lie with a man. Why? Because it wasn't designed this way. And when the angels came down and created the abomination with mankind, 
God decided to send the flood because of this abomination and the offspring that was created from this abomination. Not only did the, did they, the angels change their form to where they can be able to have these type of relationships with women, but they changed their form to have an, a relation with the animals and have offspring with the animals, creating an offspring of beastly hybrid monsters. This is what they're doing in science now. The devil is driving science today. They're the ones behind all of this stuff with the pox and with the release of the deadly disease. They're the ones that's trying to combine man and angels, man and computers, man and all of these types of things because they know that it is against God's order. And if it is against God's order, then it brings God's wrath upon the thing that is in disorder. And they want God's wrath to come down. Let me just say this. In heaven, there is an angel called a cherub. He's a hybrid. This is exactly what Satan once was. He was a hybrid. He was a cherub. And the Bible says he has the face of a man, the face of an ox, the face of an eagle, and the face of a lion. It has four wings, all filled with eyes. It has a man's legs and a calf's feet. It's a hybrid. You see? There are other angels called seraphim. They have the body of a serpent, but it has six wings. With two wings, it covered its feet. With two wings, it covered its eyes. And with two wings, it flew. It's called, it's also a hybrid. So the angels in heaven, many of them are hybrid types. So, but when God made earth and creation in the earth realm, he separated it from the celestial realm. He didn't want it to be anything like anything that was in heaven. He wanted it to be the terra firma and the earth. So what he did was each day of existence, he separated each one. The calf, the bird, man, all of them were distinctly separate. But when the angels rebelled against God, they came out of heaven and they begin to try to make in the earth what was once in heaven. They tried to bring together human, animal, and angels all together as one being. And this was the abomination against God. Uh, it's quiet in here. So here's the deal. In Revelation chapter 9, I want to show you two falls of angels. Revelation chapter 9, that real quick, Revelation chapter 9, and starting at the second verse, you'll see that there is uh, in the bottomless pit a set of angels or creatures in the bottomless pit fit that are hybrids. They have the face of a man, of a horse, the tail of a locust, and the bite of a lion. It's a hybrid. But where did they come from? In, in Revelation chapter 9, these creatures that are, want, that are in the bottomless pit that are going to be released, where did they come from and then why are they locked up? They came from Genesis chapter 6. There's another set of angels there in verse 14 of Revelation chapter 9 of four angels that are locked up right now under the Euphrates River. They're locked up under the Euphrates River. These four beings were once principalities over the four kingdoms, the four great kingdoms of the world. They were over the, the Grecian, the, the, the Persian, the Babylonian, and the Roman empires, and they murdered all types of people. And because these principalities were over all the murder of mankind, God locked them up. And the 200 angels that had sex with women, they committed an abomination. They are no longer free. They cannot roam anywhere. They cannot go anywhere because according to Jude, there's only one chapter in Jude. According to Jude chapter uh, uh, 1 verse 6, God, after they did this thing with the women and created an offspring in this earth that are called giants, Nephilim. It's funny because we found bones around this world that was 39 feet tall, 40 feet, 12 feet, 15 feet, 20 feet. 
And, but Smithsonian, the Smithsonian, when, they, when people find these things, they take those bones and burn them and destroy them because why? This science testifies to what happened in Genesis chapter 6. They don't want any truth in this world. Here in Arizona, there's something called the Egyptian uh, Cynodale. Look it up. The Egyptian Cynodale in the Canyon. It was the home inside of the mountains, very distinct design, very unique, that was created by the Nephilim. These people are these giants, these once dwellers, are the, the, the offspring of angel and humanity. They lived in these caves because they was hiding from mankind. Because God, when he sent in Joshua and Moses, he sent them into regions of the world to destroy this offspring of these giants. When God would send them in and say, hey, listen, I don't want you to leave one of them left to survive. I don't want any of them. I want you to kill every beast, every man, every, all of them, because they were the offspring of giants. But according to Jude verse 6, it says that these angels are reserved in chains... What is the chains made of? Darkness. And they are tied into the place that is the lowest hell called Tartarus. And, um, and so God has them locked up. So God has judged angels already. He's locked them up so that mankind can have the freedom. But let's get to the timing. Look at verse 29. It says this, and behold... The demons, they had devils coming out of them and, uh, coming, and they had them living in the tombs. And nobody would pass that way because the demons were so scary. And behold, they cried out, they cried out saying, what have we to do with thee, Jesus, you son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before our time? Everybody say, it's my time. Some people have told me in my walk with God that God ain't concerned about time here on earth. God is the existed one, and he exists outside of time. So don't you worry about the time. God ain't worried about time, but God is concerned about time because he made us time creatures who are to observe the signs of time. He gave us the moon, the stars, and the sun to be able to track the time that is in the earth. So it's called the chronos. It's called chronos time, humanity time, regular clock time. But you see these demons here, they are concerned about time. They looked at Jesus and said, are you coming here to torment us before our time? Let me say to you young folks, torment is being on drugs. Torment is having to buy a pack of cigarettes that cost $7 a pack. Torment is drinking alcohol every morning that you have to rise up and your liver is just messed up. Torment is being lazy and not getting a job. Torment is not caring about education or hygiene. Torment is when you don't believe in God and you're walking away in this life as if you're just a ship drifting without a sail. Torment is when you don't even believe in anything good. You don't even believe in the existence of God. And these boys here were tormented by demon spirits. Now, what is a demon? A demon. During the flood of, in Genesis chapter 6, when the angels and the women had offspring, their children got drowned in the flood. God wouldn't let them on the boat. God did not want them on the boat. You got in your mind, well, he, didn't he tell Noah to preach to him? No, he didn't tell Noah to preach to him. Noah was telling them, because you did this, God ain't let you into the new world. Because you committed abomination and because you were evil and because you killed and ate human flesh and you committed the abomination with mankind and beast, God is not letting you on the ship. And the reason why I know that is because God only made the ship big enough for eight human beings and some animals. The rest of the animals and humans were all messed up. They were hybrids. They were big creatures. They had the bloodline of fallen angels in them and God would not let them on the boat. 
I'm telling you that there are some folks that's not going to get on the boat with Jesus. They don't want to get on the boat. They love Satan. They love sin. And I don't care what you say to them. They're not coming in. You understand me? So you might as well get your house together. Get yourself together. Focus on your relationship with God. Make sure that you're okay. And make sure things are working out between you and God. And then you work yourself. You work your salvation. But you can't make everybody get on the boat. So the angels, the, 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 the demons, that when they died, God had to create a special circumstance for these offspring to be trapped on the earth because they couldn't go to hell yet because their time wasn't up. They couldn't go to heaven because they were of an offspring that was made of an abomination. So today when we deal with things called demons, we're dealing with these spirits that had drowned in the flood back in Genesis chapter 6. And here's what they already know. They know that God has a set time to destroy them and to put them in everlasting torture. You understand me? God has a timing for the fallen angels, for the angels that rebelled, for the chimeras. He has a time for the, the angels in Eu Euphrates, and he has a time for you and me. The time that he has designed for you and me, that from the time you and I gave our life to Jesus Christ, God put a divine clock on our lives. God put his hand on our lives and say, this is the child that I have redeemed. My blood is on them. My timing is on them. My favor is on them. And you ain't going to die just like an everyday person. According to Psalm 31, precious in the eyes of the Lord are the death of his blessed loved ones. Let me tell you something. God is right there with you. In all of your life, he's got assigned to you two angels by the name of goodness and mercy. And goodness and mercy are assigned to you and they're going to keep you in all the ways that you go. Because you you belong to God and God has assigned fiery existing ones the beings that are made of fire to stand alongside of you to keep you from the snares and the desires of demon spirits they don't like you they hate you they are jealous of you they hate the way you praise God they hate the way you smell they hate the way you pray they hate the way you look they hate the fact that you're made out of clay but at the same time God enough sense to never leave the presence of God. Uh, yes, I'm made out of clay, but I got enough sense to never leave God. Uh, you were there with God and you left God like a silly stupid demon but 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 because I'm and have the intelligence uh, and because I have the love for God uh, that you did not have uh, and because I have the intelligence that you did not have uh, demons are angry with you uh, when you lift your hands they get upset uh, when you call on the name of Jesus they get upset uh, when you join the church they really get mad uh, they mad at you now uh, because they, they mad uh, because you stopped drinking with them uh, see they're mad because you stopped smoking weed with them. They mad because you know how to pray now. When did you learn how to pray like that? When you you learn how to talk like that? I learned when God put his hand on me. He saved me and delivered me. He brought me out of the things that tortured me. Yeah, I was bound just like you was, looking for pieces of crack on the ground, trapped in my sins. But Jesus came and delivered me. And because he picked me up and turned me around, placed my feet on solid ground, I'll never look back again in my life. The hell I came out of, oh no, I ain't going back to that. I'd rather die right where I am than to go back into the sin that I was messed up. Yeah, I was messed up from the flow up to the store up. I was gone. I was out of here. But God saved me. I don't know why he did it. I had homeboys that died in their sins and they were much better than I was. They were good and I wasn't good. I was a bad person. I was a person of no faith. I was sneaky like a rat. But God saw fit to redeem me. Anybody happy that he redeemed you? Anybody glad that he saved you? Anybody glad that he gave you the mind that you have? Yeah. They didn't even think you would be safe. They didn't even think you'd be the one. They thought you was going to die in the club. They thought you was going to die from drug overdose. But the devil is a lie. When God saw me sinking in my sins far from the peaceful shore, 
seeking to rise no more. Uh, he reached down and pulled me up uh, and placed me in his pavilion. Uh, and he says, Jerome, you're my child now. Uh, my hand is on your life. Uh, my timing is on your life. Uh, let me tell you something, child of God. Uh, God's timing is on you. Uh, and when God gets ready to bless you, it's going to be a blessing. Uh, when God gets ready to bless you with that money, it shall be done. Uh, when God gets ready to bless you with that husband, uh, it shall be done. Uh, when God's timing is on your life, uh, the devil can't mess up nothing. Uh, because everywhere around you, uh, there will be divine connections. Uh, yeah, you just backed into a door. Uh, but there happened to be somebody there hiring on a job. Uh, you see, God is about to make everything come together for your good. Uh, see, when you're walking with God, uh, good things happen to God's people. Uh, when you're walking with God, uh, good things happen to God's people. Uh, Well, Pastor Jerome, I, I hear you, but uh, just a lot of bad stuff been happening to me. A lot of bad stuff. Like, I, I, I listen to people sometimes. I'm like, you know what? Let, just, just let it go. <laughs> you know? Sometimes I just want to say like, oh, go on, brother. If this is the way you really feel, your faith is weak. I want to see some folk with strong faith. That if God allows my life to fall down so low that I've got to live underneath a bridge, I shall never let go of his hand. Timing. God's timing. As a child of God, your death is going to be something precious. It's going to be a day to remember. When Stephen, the first martyr of the church, was being stoned, they were killing him and, and Saul of Tarsus, Paul, was consenting unto his death. And he was holding their coats as they stoned Stephen. And the Bible says that after they begin to stone Stephen, that Stephen looked up into the heavens. And he says, I see Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Jesus wasn't sitting down. The Bible said that he is seated at the right hand of the Father. But at the time of Stephen's death, Jesus had to stand up. Listen, I want to welcome you into the kingdom. I'm standing up for you because this is your timing. And You are somebody. You're not just an average Joe. You've been redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus. His blood shed, God's blood was shed in the earth for you and me. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life and your name means something in the heavens. God Almighty. They tried to kill me, y'all. They tried to kill me. But God's timing... God's timing, God's timing over my life would not allow death to come close to me. And I'm here to tell you that as you get ready to go to school, and as you get ready to go off to college, and as you get ready to walk into from the summer into the fall, and from the fall into the winter, I want you to take this thought with you that it's my time. It's God's timing over my life. It's my time to walk in the divine power. It's my time to walk in the divine knowledge of my God. Yes, these are things that even angels cannot have access to. These are things that even the angels can't do. I can sing a song, the song of the redeemed, that I've been redeemed with the blood of the lamb. And death may want me, but it can't have me because God has timing over my life. And I'm not worried about a school shooter. I'm not worried about a coronavirus. I'm not worried about a chicken pock or that pock. I got the pock of God. And the pock of God is over my life. And death ain't gonna come nowhere near me. Death can't even touch me because the blood is over me power is over me glory is over me somebody shout glory to God 
Tell your neighbor right now. Tell him, say, the timing of God uh, is on your life. Uh, yeah, the media is trying to bring fear. And even the children of God are afraid. Because the timing of the world, they say it's time to mask up. They say it's time to vax up. They say it's time for this and time for that. But I want to remind you that it's time to let you know that you are a special one. You are one of God's specially marked people in this world. You are marked with the hand of God on you. You are marked by the presence of angels around you. And demons can see it, but they ain't going to tell you. They can see it, but they won't acknowledge it. They can see it, but they can't get under that ring of fire that's around you. You got a hedge of protection around you. You got God's hand around you. You got God's word over you. You got the Holy Ghost over you. And I don't care what the devil have to say. I don't care what he's threatening you with. The devil is a liar. Look at three people say the devil is a liar. God is about to bring something out of me that the world said I never had. I've got power, baby. I've got power. I've got the favor of God. Oh, I feel like preaching now. Oh, I feel like now. I feel like going into revival mode. Go ahead on and grab somebody by the hand now. Go ahead and grab somebody by the hand and say, this is about the timing of God. This handshake right here, we're coming into agreement. Jesus said, if two or three of you... Get together in my name as touching anything and ask it for me. Uh, he said, I'm going to do it. Uh, so now as the hand I'm holding, I pronounce upon you uh, the timing of God, uh, the kairos of God, uh, the glory of God. Uh, yeah, you're going through something right now, buddy. Uh, I can see it in your eyes. Uh, you're going through some financial stuff. Uh, but in the name of Jesus, I speak a kairos over you. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I speak kairos in your health. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I speak kairos in your marriage. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I speak kairos in your health. Uh, that in the name of Jesus, I got you. Uh, and I'm about to release a prophetic warfare over you. Uh, grab that hand right now. Uh, say, in the name of Jesus, I pronounce over you now the kairos of God. Don't you ever doubt it. From this moment on, I place over you divine power, divine glory, divine healing, divine presence. May the power of the Holy Ghost rest upon you in an unusual way. I ain't talking about normal. I'm talking about abnormal. That you lay hands on the sick and the sick be healed. That you cast out devils and devils come out now. In Jesus' name, say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. I feel like preaching now. Everybody stand to your feet and let's get out of here. But I feel it now. I feel it now. Grab somebody by the hand now and say, neighbor, God's got timing over you. And there's about to be a release of the trouble you've been going through. I speak release upon you. I speak release from trouble. I speak release from trouble. I speak release right now. I count to three in Jesus' name. Be released right now in Jesus' name. Come on, be released. Say loose here. Say loose here. Let them go. Say I command you in the name of Jesus to put down your weapons and flee right now. Be released from all struggle, from all trouble in Jesus' name. Now hold that hand up with me. Father, this hand that's being held up, I pronounce right now divine timing over them 
And Father, I untie and I unchain them from the spirits of trouble, torment, torture, evil, addiction, affliction, alcoholism, sexual perversion. May the spirit of the living God come upon you now. Tende a shawl shabai. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it. Everybody lift your voice and give God some praise. Give some praise. Listen, I'm used to folk when they get free, when they get something from God. They don't just stand there. <laughs> I'm used to folk that when they hear a word from God, they just celebrate the Lord. Do I have any runners in here? Do I have any celebrators in here? When I count to three, I want you to release your praise for God, all right? Don't be ashamed. Don't worry about nobody. This is about you and God. One. I feel an anointing, Bishop. I feel an anointing. Watch this. Everybody that wants to get under the umbrella of God's timing, I want you to rush the altar right now. Rush the altar right now. Come on down. Te'eshoba. The timing of God. Watch this. Your life ain't gonna be the same after the day. After today, your life is not gonna be the same, I assure you. Watch this. Listen, it's just a simple act. Sometimes, the more simple the act, the more it shows faith. And by walking down to the altar, you just, you just blessed your life. You just blessed your life in a tremendous way. Now, Father, because of their act of faith, the timing that you've spoken over their life for release, for breakthrough, for the prophetic, for the gifts of your spirit, I pronounce it over their lives now. And because of the mantle that you've placed over my life, God, I release it even within this hour. The move of your spirit, of the timing of God, in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands and give God the praise. Give God the glory. Young people that's going to school, come, come to me. I know, I know y'all got a special service. I know y'all have a special service. All you young people that's getting ready to go to school, come, come. Huh? Call all students, college, come, come up here, come up here. All of you students. All students that's returning to school, come up here to me. All students. I once was young, but now I'm a little older. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. If you're going to school or returning to school, come. Come, yeah, come on, babies. Come on. Come. Come. Come on. Come on. Watch. Is everybody? Because I don't want them.
the business. We got teachers as well. I'm going to do this real quick. I believe God has something special over my life that kept me from the pitfalls and snares that are in the schools. And I want to share this with the children. I want to share it with the youth. I want this devotion and this dedication that I have on my life to rest on you. I just want you to high five me when I come your way, okay? Just high five me, all right? I just want you to touch me. Give me a high five. In the name of Jesus. 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 High five. There we go. Give me a high five, buddy. There we go. Good. Give me a high five, my man. Thank you. High five. There we go. Good. 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 Give me a high five. There we go. Give me a high five. Let's do this. Come on. High five. There we go. There we go. Give it to me. Share. There we go. Good. 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 There we go. Thank you. Good. Good. The Spirit of God rests over these children and anoint them to be consecrated, to be dedicated. Let their minds be protected from doctrines of devils. Give me a high five. Give me a high five. Give me a high five. May they be protected and guarded from the doctrines of devils. Give me a high five, brother. Give me a high five. Give me a high five, sister. Y'all, 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 All right. All right. Why don't you extend your hands this way in Jesus' name? Come on, raise your hands, kids. Raise your hands. This is why you're here. Amen. Jesus, with your power, God, every word, every prophetic word that has been released upon them, Father, I declare that you will assign angels around them to protect them. Hedge of protection, Father. Lord, the Holy Ghost upon them. The, the Word of God is a lamp unto their feet uh, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, by the power of God. Come on, church. Lord, with your power, God. God, hallelujah, protect them from every evil. God, give them a mind, Jesus. Uh, to excel by the power of God uh, to rise up uh, in the times that we're living in today uh, in the name of Jesus uh, every spirit uh, every diabolical force uh, be broken uh, every enchantment assignment God uh, that has been declared over we cancel it by the power of God uh, in the name of Jesus uh, in the name of Jesus uh, in the name of Jesus uh, come on church uh, hallelujah by your power our God, Lord, with the Holy Ghost, you need the Holy Ghost, kids. Every one of you should be speaking in tongues. Yes. Yale kotoro mo chatara baba, yale kotoro basi karaba, yale katara baba te koto. God, with your power, Jesus, cause them to rise and to excel by your power, God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Give the Lord a round of applause. Come on, somebody. Every, every Monday, I want to encourage the families that every Monday, nationwide, we come here at 7 o'clock to pray and to intercede for the children. It's an organization that is happening. And I would love to see every parent, every grandparent come here at 7 o'clock. Because we are not only interceding for our children, but for all children. Somebody say amen. Thank you, children. Amen. You may be, you, let's go back to our places. Praise God. Uh, we're going to worship the Lord. We have, I don't know how many baptisms we have. If you have not given your life over to Jesus, this is a time to do it. My praise, my praise. 
She's been giving Bible studies by Sister Liz and her family has just been ministering to this young lady. She says she's ready to commit her life to the Lord and walk as a new creation in Christ. Amen. So we're going to pray for her. We're going to encourage her and we're going to support her in her walk. Amen. In Jesus name, let's pray. Father, we thank you, God. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for the, the faith that you put in Anna, God. Father, we pray for her, Lord. Let your word be a lamp unto her feet. Anna Barrera, I as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. Praise the Lord. 
Lord. Amen. Uh, so much was said today. I love, I love Revelation. I love it. I love it so much. I was telling Pastor Jerome that, that you know, from early this morning, he was imparting some revelation. You know, being a student of the Word of the Lord, I, I was really just drawn to it and intrigued in that those subjects because there are dimensions of worlds that are very real. The Bible says that he's the God of worlds, and then he's not talking about Venus and Pluto, all that, though he's created everything. But there are worlds, dimensions of worlds here today. Amen. And I thank God for that in Jesus' name. Our God is a mighty God. Amen. Amen. And, and we need to pray for one another in the times that we're living in today. Uh, never underestimate uh, the gift and the power that God has placed in your life in Jesus' name. Every one of us have something to give back. And what I mean by this is that you give of yourself. That which you have received from God, you share it with someone else. And sometimes it's just a, a, an encouragement. Amen? Sometimes, uh, hey, you know, just, just a good, I love you, praise the Lord, goes a long way with some people. Amen. I know it happens. It works with all of us in Jesus' name. And uh, especially when we're living in, in such a uh, indoctrinated world that is teaching people how to hate each other. That's not God. Come on, somebody. God is a good God. I'm so glad that you're part of Redeemer Apostolic Church. I trust that you come here because God has led you here, right? We thank God for our friends. Amen. And if you're just visiting here and you're looking for a church home, you don't have to look any further. Do you believe that? Why don't you turn to your neighbor and tell them, you know what? We want you to be part of our church. Can you do that? I said, can you turn to your neighbor and tell them, turn. That means turn around. Me turn. Meaning turn your body. Amen. Turn your body. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not insulting your intelligence, but turn your body. Amen. Use some WD-40 if the joints are getting sticky a little bit, Lord. We need to be more uh, flexible and loving. God is a good God. Amen. How many really enjoyed or received the, of the word of the Lord today? Um, in Jesus, you know, I, uh, I'm so glad that he came. I called him at the last minute. Uh, he's just a man that God has anointed. He takes the, the Bible. I, I always want to refer to the ball. You know, I can see him playing in the NFL, and he's just a wrecking ball. I'm telling you, if you look at his picture, he had no neck. Well, he's got a neck now, praise the Lord. But you know what I'm saying? You know, praise God. And the, en the enemy tried to really destroy him. But God, somebody say, but God. You know, um, we are, are, we love to give. My wife asked you to give, and I know we give, 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 give. But if you cannot give, then, then you can't. But, I, but if you can, I want you to use your heart. Uh, I like to bless men of God, praise the Lord. It, we've, been, we've been taught and mentored by elders, uh, pastors who are big, very successful. They, many, many of them are retired now. And they've taught me that it's always... Uh, the blessing, the will of God for us to bless, amen, men of God that come through our, do our doors to minister. Years ago, I'll let you go in a little bit. Years ago, uh, remember I was just a young preacher many moons ago, and Pastor David Hernandez asked me to come to his church, amen, and I didn't know anything about offerings and things like this, and we had some serious bills that we needed to pay. You know, when you start a church, it ain't easy. When you start your business, it's not easy. You're, you're in it for five years or longer. How many business owners can say amen to that? It doesn't just happen. It happens. You got to work at it. And so my wife and I and my children, we worked diligently at that time. We were young. And he invited us to our church. Went to, I mean, we went to his church, and he really blessed us. Um, and they used to really roll out the red carpet for us. And we were, like, so honored. And God taught us humility. And then David, and then Bishop Adam Lopez found out I was in the Southern California area. He calls me. He says, pack your bags. You're coming to Union City. Because they found out there was a young preacher, a young couple that was aspiring ministry. So in life, God gives us an opportunity to be a blessing is my point. I've learned from these things in Jesus' name. He didn't say this, but God has a way. If anybody, I'm going to say it like this. Um, 
you know, he, I, you know, somebody, you know, he walked out. Was showing my son Josh uh, the Hummer. You said Hummer at first. It was a Honda Civic. I thought you said maybe I'm prophesying. He said I, I have a Hummer. I'm looking at. Hmm. I couldn't see the Hummer, but I see it in the Holy Ghost. But hold on, hold on. So he pointed at this Honda that somebody blessed him with. Amen. And then, I don't know, so I'm going to mess things up, but I'm going to try to fix it. And he lent his vehicle out to someone out of kindness. That's what preachers do. And they wreck his Honda Hummer. And I said, man, I said, well, you know. And God always pulls me out like he reveals things to me. You know, he sees. You know. So I guess I'm going to share my, my burden with you. If you know someone or you want to be a blessing to him, he didn't ask me this. Uh, the insurance is not going to cover it because somebody else was driving it. And you part of this business or you can just be a blessing to him and we can find a place to get his, amen, uh, car fixed. I want, I want to ask that. And those of you that are watching online in Jesus' name, can you do that? Can you bless him? Come to me, talk to me afterwards. Say, you know what, I'll take care of it. You know, God has been too, very uh, so good to all of us. The last thing I want to do, amen, these men stand up here because we want to give. I don't want you to leave. When my wife, the first lady, stands up here and tells you that things are, you know, very seldom we try to ask you to help us financially, things like this. Well, once again, she did it because, you know, everything is going sky high, amen. I noticed that some of you, when she said that the utility bill was $5,000, some of you go, oh, my God. Now you know why sometimes I walk around here turning, around, turning off lights. You do that at your own house? Ah, uh, amen. But, you know, together we can do a lot. Right? Amen. It's, it's the power of unity brings strength. You know, so some of you people that you just come and I love you all, but, you know, you like the blessings. Ask your neighbor, is it nice and cool in here? Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. You got chills. It's nice and cool. Now turn around and say, it's not free. So quit chilling. Quit chilling. I know you, right? I mean, some of us have the gift of just love. You know, you, you, man. Some, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Some of you are like, let's go out to eat. Oh, I forgot my wallet. Hey, Amen. I'm sorry. And you know that person across the table is going to say, I got it. You knew it. You have discernment, the gift of knowledge, the gift of wisdom, and the gift, I forgot it. You little rascal, you. Right? How many know people like that? Yeah, yeah. Go like this. Amen. Some of you. Hey, God gives you an opportunity to be a blessing. I'm a giver. I love to give. When people pay for us, we, we, it's awkward for us. And God, thank God for capacity. And, and it makes me uncomfortable because, hey, Pastor, I'll, I'll, pay, I'll, I'll pay the bill. I'm like, no, I want to pay. And so what they have to do is they have to kind of sneak it. They'll call, they'll speak to the waitress and they'll say, I got it. Because they know that my wife and I are going to cover the bill. I want to be known as a giver. Right? I want to be known as a giver. God is a giver. Praise the Lord. The government's trying to take it from you. Hello, somebody. Let's invest in the kingdom of God. Where, Ra, uh, where amen, rust and moth cannot corrupt it. And anytime you invest in God's kingdom, God will bless you. And it comes in many ways, more than just monetary form, health, amen. Just, just being sober-minded, meaning you, your mind is in the right place. Longevity life, long life is the mark of God's blessings in our lives. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity. So I'm going to ask you to just to not to not to leave, amen, unless you give, you want to give, just as I've given you instructions, please do so, these men of God, um, amen, uh, are going to come by you, um, you can do it electronically, those of you that are watching, if you have not uh, signed up for our 101 class, we're waiting for you, my wife will be doing the first session here in the fellowship hall, please go so you can learn uh, everything what it is about this ministry and capture the heartbeat here at Redeemer, we're excited when you come. You become part of a family. Amen? And we want to do better. We want to do better. We want you. We want to celebrate new arrivals. And we just want to empower you. Amen? And so much, so much, so much. In Jesus' name. Father, I give you praise and I thank you for the baptisms today. God, I thank you, God, for the giving, the contributions. I declare blessings over their lives. 
I thank God for Pastor Jerome Davidson that you have blessed him, you have kept him, God. And I just pray that you would just continue to uh, uh, lead him as you have in the past. I, I hear the, the enemy came one way. But Lord, I declare seven ways he'll flee. But in those seven ways that he has gone, there are seven doors, seven blessings, seven ways in which God you will empower him and bless him wholeheartedly amen financially spiritually in Jesus name God bless you folks we have our Spanish uh, session in the 101 please greet someone touch someone's life don't go until you meet someone if you're new and you want I don't know you you make your way up I want to get to know you God bless you God bless you